There's an old Native American story. It seems to be sort of a pan Native American story, and I've heard people from different tribes tell versions of the same story. And um, I talked to Lloyd Arneach, a great Cherokee storyteller. He said he thinks the story might have actually started among the Cherokee in the Southern Appalachian Mountains. And, uh, and he gave me permission, said it was fine with him if I told this story. And it's a story about a man and a woman. They've been together for a long time, and they weren't getting along very well. They were kind of fussing and bickering, and she didn't feel like he respected her. And he did respect her, and he did love her, but somehow it wasn't coming through. Now, Lloyd told me that, 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 this, that this is actually was first man and first woman. But all we know is these two were having a hard time, and one day she got so upset, she just stomped out of that lodge, and down the trail she went. She didn't know where she was going. She had a lump in her throat. She had a pain in her heart. She didn't know, she didn't know where she was going. She knew she was just going out of there. And he didn't know what to do. She'd never actually just left before. And so he moped around the lodge for about half a day, and she didn't come back. He thought that she'd come back and they could work it out, but she didn't come back. And, and uh, he realized he better go out there and find her. Now, he was a good tracker. He could follow the most subtle animal signs. He could follow the most, most delicate tracks. And when he saw her tracks, he had no trouble following those tracks. He could tell a whole lot of those tracks just by looking at them. He could tell by the way that, the way that heel stomped into the ground that she was stomping mad. He could tell from how far apart her footprints were that she was, she was moving fast. So he jogged along that trail for about half a day. And every time he'd see a set of her tracks, he could tell how old they were. And he realized that they, they were the same relative age. He was unable to close the distance between them. So he didn't know what to do. He sat down there in the, in the trail and he prayed. He had a conversation with the powers and said, you don't have to make her change her mind, but could you just slow her down a little so I could talk to her? And it seemed like maybe his prayers were being heard because as the breezes rustled the leaves in the trees, they kind of whispered and they whispered her name. But she wasn't listening to any trees whispering. She was stomping mad. She was stomping down that trail. She was, she was just so mad she wasn't hearing anything. And the birds began singing. They were singing, not like they normally sung, they were singing harmonies, they were singing melodies. They were calling out her name, but she wasn't listening to the birds. She was just so mad, she was just so angry. She was stomping down that trail. Soon flowers began to burst and bloom as she passed. She wasn't looking at the flowers, she was looking straight at that trail leading out of there. It's all she was doing. She was so upset, so angry. She was gonna take special intervention. Well then all of a sudden, right where she was looking, right in the trail, she looked and there was a berry but it wasn't like any berry she'd ever seen before. She stopped, she picked that berry, she smelled it. It smelled so good. She tasted a little bit of it. Oh, sweet. Had a, had a tang to it, a wonderful flavor. She ate that berry. It was delicious. And then she looked around and there was a few more of those berries. She stopped, she picked up one after another. She started eating those berries. Then, then she thought she couldn't find any more. Then she looked and there was this little meadow out there beside the trail. And all in that meadow were all these little berries. So she stopped and she started picking those berries and eating those berries. And oh, that juice trickled down her throat, started to kind of melt that lump in her throat, kind of soften that little hard spot in her heart. And she looked around and she, the flowers were beautiful and the breezes in the trees were just so sweet. And the way the birds were singing, it was so beautiful. And she was eating those berries and she looked up and she saw her husband. As soon as she saw the expression on his face, she said, you ought to try these berries, they're really good. And they say it was a long time before they got up out of that field, and when they did, they were walking home hand in hand. And all along that trail where they'd never seen them before were those berries. And those berries are still out there. They're the first berries that come on after the cold winters are over, the cold freezes of winter are over. And if, if you talk to Native Americans and ask them what they call those berries, it often translates out to mean a word that sounds like that it means heartberry, because they're shaped like the human heart. And actually, we grow them in our gardens, and a lot of us do. When we do, we usually mulch them with straw, and we call them strawberries. And that's how the first strawberry came to be. And that story is as old as the people and as modern as today, isn't it? There's a song that celebrates strawberries, and it goes like this. Strawberry picking, strawberry picking. When you think you see some, that is when there are none. When you think there are none, that is when you see some. You know, it's about a lot of things in life, not just strawberries, right? Strawberry picking, strawberry picking. 
When you think you see some, that is when there are none. When you think there are none, that is when you see some. I was walking one day with no real reason. I had forgotten it was strawberry season through the honeysuckle, clover, and the butterflies. All of a sudden, there they were before my very eyes. Strawberry picking, strawberry picking. When you think you see some, that is when there are none. When you think there are none, that is when you see some. Well, you stoop one way and you stoop the other. Don't step back on your little bitty brother. Watch your big boots in the strawberry bed. And don't pick the little ones that aren't quite red. Strawberry picking, strawberry picking. When you think you see some, that is when there are none. When you think there are none, that is when you see some. Well, the wild strawberry is wonderful to eat. Sun shines down and it makes it sweet. I can tell you've been sneaking through the strawberry bed because your mouth and your fingers and your ears are red. Strawberry picking, strawberry picking. When you think you see some, that is when there are none. When you think there are none, that is when you see some. Strawberries, strawberries. That's the strawberry song by Lorraine Du Sweet. Thank you.